Cheers. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, back by popular demand, my guest is Dr. Shayla Toons Wither. I get to meet her in September at the Plantrition Conference. There's still tickets left if you want to go. She's going to be a speaker. I'm going to be a speaker. Lots of other wonderful speakers like Dr. Dean Ornish, Dr. T. Colin Campbell. Hope you can make it. Please welcome her back to the show. What have you been up to since your last appearance on Chef AJ Live? Oh, well, thank you so much for having me again. I'm just happy to be here. And, you know, just continuing to spread the word to people really about putting more plants on their plate. I started a, a lifestyle medicine uh, official program into my own clinic there. And then I've uh, also started a podcast. So it's Essence of Health Tea Time. And so I've been telling even more people about, you know. Didn't know you started a podcast. Know. Make sure you give me the link yeah. so we can put it in the in the show notes to, to let yeah. people know how to listen. What's the name of the podcast? It's Essence of Health Tea Time podcast. And oh. so it, it's, you know, the colloquial term of spilling the tea. And so it's based off that. So spilling the tea on health and wellness and plant-based nutrition. So <laughs> nice. Well, welcome, welcome to the podcasting world. It's fun interviewing people, isn't it? It is. You know, I, I didn't think I would enjoy it so much talking all the time, but actually I, I have. I've enjoyed it and, you know, just diving into different topics with folks. It, it's been fun. Yeah. Is it is it a weekly podcast? It is every Tuesday. Uh, there is a new episode. So nice. Absolutely. That's great. I find I like interviewing people better than being interviewed because when I'm interviewed, I feel like I already said that like a million times, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It definitely turns the, the table for you. Yeah. yeah. What, what um, do you have any advice as an interviewer? Like, best if, if anybody out there is interested in be doing a podcast, like, what advice would you give them? Yeah. So something I've been doing that's actually gotten good feedback from guests on my show is I do like a pre-prep meeting and it's quick, like 15 minutes where we'll hop on a Zoom and kind of just um, brainstorm, you know, to make sure we kind of dial in on the topic and make sure I I know that they're aligned with what, you know, what I want for the show. Uh, and so we do that and then they schedule the actual, you know, recording session afterwards. And I'll typically send some, some pre-prep questions, not that we like stick to a script, but, you know, it at least gives them an idea as to what we're going to talk about. And then we just chat from there. And so I got good feedback from the guests that they they kind of like that routine. They felt, you know, much more comfortable with it. That's interesting. Are you, is your podcast audio only or do you record with video? It's and both. I put it on, um, on my YouTube channel too. It's not live though. So it's all recorded and then uploaded, but yeah. It's nice, cool. nice. Yeah, you know, it's funny because um, I, 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 that's a that's good advice. I never thought to do that because I always kind of like to be spontaneous and just meet the person for the first time. That's why I don't even like to get on Zoom earlier. I like to like, nope, I'll get on one minute earlier and we'll just start the show. But that is a good way to do things, though. Yeah, yeah. Because I had, you know, I'll give you the example. I had a, um, you know, you get these pitch services that'll send you these packets for people. And so I had this particular service and they said, yeah, this person will be great for your tea time podcast because they, you know, make tea and they curate tea. And I was like, okay, clearly they haven't listened though to what the podcast is about, because even though it's called tea time, it's about, you know, spilling the tea and actually, you know, these topics that are related to health and wellness and improving the health of people and not just, you know, someone who just happens to make tea, but aren't really, you know, have any health and wellness perspective to it. And so, <laughs> yeah. Well, that'd be fun if you could actually sit down and have tea with your guests. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So what are you going to talk about today? Yeah. So today I want to share with your audience uh, about a, a term that I actually coined. It's called the health crisis trifecta. And what it is, is it dives into high blood pressure, those uh, conditions of insulin resistance, like prediabetes, diabetes, and high cholesterol. Uh, and, you know, I title it what your doctor didn't tell you about reversing the health crisis trifecta. Because uh, even as a physician, I know that, you know, a lot in our uh, medical community still don't spend a lot of time or don't even have enough time to share with their patients how they can actually reverse these conditions, especially in a holistic way, uh, without throwing more medications onto the table. And I often get people who come to me and share with me that, you know, yeah, my doctor told me I had A, B, or C. Uh, and they say, yeah, you know, go make some changes, go, you know, uh, start walking or go on a diet, but they don't give them any details as to what they can actually do or how these things work and how to actually put it in the place. And so that's what I'll be sharing. 
That's like, do you, is your practice only in person or do you do, do you have a virtual component? I do both. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a, a brick and mortar clinic where I see patients in person, but then I've also dived into health coaching. So I see folks all over the country virtually to uh, do one-on-one uh, nutrition and lifestyle coaching. Nice. Nice. I, I, lifestyle medicine so cool, isn't it? It is. Yeah. And it's so rewarding just to, you know, see people make those changes. Absolutely. You actually see them get well. Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, nice. Well, I look forward to your presentation. It's so funny because tri- I think of trifecta, I think of two things. That's that's the name of a horse race, right? The trifecta? Uh, it is, yeah. <laughs> and then there's actually a recipe in my book called trifecta. I don't know why I named it that other than it had three ingredients. So that'll be fun okay. to see well, what it, your yeah, definition of trifecta right. is. Yeah, yeah, it works. Nice. All right. Well, I will get started here then. Let me... Share my screen. And I'm a person that has a bajillion tabs, so I make sure I'm sharing the right one. <laughs> yeah, we don't want any personal <laughs> right, <laughs> right. information. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. And so my slideshow should be loaded here. Uh, and so, yeah, so we'll just be talking about what your doctor didn't tell you about reversing the health crisis trifecta. Sounds good. And, I will start here with this statement. And this statement, honestly, I put it here because it's something that I commonly hear from folks uh, who come to me and, you know, we con- I consult with, and they're saying things like, you know, I want to lower my blood pressure, lower my blood sugar, or, you know, stop being, stop having diabetes. I want to lower my cholesterol and I want to lose some weight, but I don't want to take more medicines. I don't want to be on some fad or crash diet because they've already tried those. And I don't want to be in the gym all day long because I really don't have time for that. And so that's what this comes from. All right. And so going into the health crisis trifecta, excuse me, in terms of what it is, uh, it's those conditions that we chatted about. So high blood pressure, those conditions of insulin resistance and high cholesterol. And speaking in terms of high blood pressure, half of all adults in the United States actually have high blood pressure. And it's called the silent killer because a lot of times we don't tend to have symptoms until it's very, very high. And at those times, high blood pressure uncontrolled can actually lead to vision loss, kidney disease, heart failure, heart attacks, and strokes. And just looking at the numbers of folks who have high blood pressure, that's over 100 million people. Uh, And so that's a lot of people who are affected by this condition. And that's also why it falls under a crisis. And so looking at uh, the condition of prediabetes, there are 96 million American adults who have prediabetes. And with this, more than 80% of people, so most, the majority of people who actually have prediabetes, they don't even know that they have it. And so what tends to happen is, you know, you're already wrecking havoc on your body, which also makes this under the crisis mode uh, without even knowing that you have it. And even more worrisome is that within five years, up to 70% of people with prediabetes will then go on to develop type 2 diabetes if they don't take any types of intervention uh, to try to reverse this condition. And so it is a, a huge problem. Going into diabetes, over 37 million American adults have diabetes. And even more concerning, more than 1 million are newly diagnosed every year. 1 million newly diagnosed. And diabetes can increase your risk for heart disease, blindness, kidney failure, nerve damage, and death. And then we talk about healthcare costs because that's a common concern here in America, uh, the high cost of healthcare. But for those with diabetes, their cost is even two times higher uh, than someone who didn't have diabetes. So even beyond you know, the physical impact, that financial impact is great too. When we talk about high cholesterol, over 90 million American adults have high cholesterol. And like high blood pressure, high cholesterol tends to not have any symptoms at all. Yet having high cholesterol can actually increase your risk for heart disease, uh, which is the number one cause of death. And so I give you all of these numbers and facts and figures really just to first let you know that you're not alone uh, because millions of Americans are suffering and it brings home to the point of why this is a crisis, this trifecta. 
And so I'm going to share with you a couple of stories of some folks that I've worked with too, just to really give you a more personalized point as to what you can do with your own health if you uh, tend to be struggling with these challenges. Uh, the stories that I'm sharing, the uh, these are real stories. However, these are not the real photos nor the real uh, names of uh, patients or clients that I've actually worked with because we do hold uh, privacy in high, high regard. Uh, so sharing Diana's story, when I started working with Diana, uh, she was chronically bloated, having a lot of gastrointestinal problems, had been to the GI doc um, and had all of these tests done and was even uh, treated with medications because she suffered from chronic constipation uh, as accompanying to the bloating. She also had high blood pressure and she was on two blood pressure medications and had high cholesterol. So those conditions of the health crisis trifecta that we've discussed. Uh, six months after working together and making these changes that we're going to chat about here, uh, she no longer had that bloating feeling. She did not have to take those uh, constipation medicines that she had previously been taking because she was able to regulate her bowels naturally, uh, her blood pressure improved without needing more medications and actually reducing her medications. And Diana also had shared with me that she was a grandmother with a, a young uh, toddler age grandchild, and she wanted to be able to take her grandchild on trips and to do things with her grandchild. And she wanted to have energy and feel like she could keep up with this toddler. And so she did, you know, about six months later, she took her toddler uh, out on a beach trip and was able to run around on the beach and play in the sand with her grandchild. And so you know, even beyond this health crisis trifecta that we're reversing, uh, even the lifestyle that you gain back just from, you know, making these uh, even small changes within your health. And so diving into some of these common concerns that I hear from folks is that they've commonly been told that they have high blood pressure, prediabetes, diabetes, or high cholesterol. They were told to make some changes in your diet, but they weren't told how to make those changes, what changes to make, what changes can actually stick and be helpful. Another common concern that I hear from folks is that they don't like how these medicines make them feel. I'm a medical doctor and yes, we do have to prescribe medications for certain health conditions, but yes, medications as well as some supplements can also come with side effects and they aren't always tolerable side effects. And so I commonly hear that from folks that they don't like how medications make them feel and they don't like that they have to have more medicines every time they go to the doctor. And so they don't want to take all of those medicines. Another common concern uh, is with weight loss. You know, people have typically tried many, many options to lose weight, and yet it's still a challenge, and they want to know why. Uh, they've been told that their weight, uh, maybe even worsening their health, uh, contributing to one of those conditions of the health crisis trifecta. And they really just want to, you know, get off the roller coaster and, and have something sustainable for maintaining healthy weight and good health overall. And so the fireworks are here because it's like, look, there's good news here. So the health crisis trifecta is actually reversible. And we'll chat about some, some ways. And so some key takeaways that I like for folks to uh, get from this talk is really tip one uh, is that you are what you eat. And we'll chat more about that. Tip two, a keto diet is not the solution. And I pick on keto for a reason because keto, we hear so much in the media about keto and we hear so much hype that, oh, you got to go keto uh, because that's the only way that you're going to, you know, be the size or this uh, get this health goal that you want to achieve. And then tip three is that this is doable with mind body balance. And I'll tell you more about what that actually is. And so going back to tip one, let food be thy medicine and let medicine be thy food. This is a quote from one of the fathers of medicine, Hippocrates, uh, about how food can actually uh, heal and help health conditions uh, and that we can use food in that manner. All righty. And so going back to uh, tip one, conditions of the health crisis trifecta are related to what we eat. When we talked about you are what you eat, what you put on your plate and what you put into your body, it can do one of two things. So think of it this way. When you're eating, is that meal or that food item that you're consuming, is it contributing to your health condition? Or is it actually nourishing your body healthfully to contribute to good health? Let's give that some thought. 
looking at the standard American diet that the majority of Americans consume, which is why we have such high numbers in those conditions of the health crisis trifecta, it typically is, you know, those typical fast food things that we think about, the cheeseburger, fries and soda, the pizza and breadsticks, uh, you know, the hot dogs, the the larger the hot dog, the better, you know, the foot long hot dogs. And so those things tend to be salty, sugary, fatty and processed. And these are the components of those foods that make you want to eat more of those foods, which is, you know, for the restaurateurs and the folks in business, they want you to eat more of these things, which is why they have these components present, because it um, actually feeds into uh, some of the receptors in your brain, making you more crave those foods, making you want more of those foods. But those foods actually contribute to these conditions of the health crisis trifecta. And when we look at salt in general, that salty component, it uh, high sodium consumption raises blood pressure. And in turn, that in higher blood pressure can contribute to heart disease, heart attack, strokes. The sugar component, high sugar consumption raises your blood sugar and it affects your body's ability to process that sugar out over time, leading to those insulin resistance conditions like prediabetes, diabetes, uh, PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome and those uh, symptoms that go along with it. Uh, the fat component of the standard American diet, high fat consumption raises blood pressure, worsens diabetes because it feeds into that insulin resistance and contributes to heart disease. And then when we just look at processed foods overall, it includes all of these components. So, you know, if you think about those packaged goods or even just looking at this meal in the picture, it has all of the components of salt, sugar, fat, uh, those packaged foods that you buy on the shelf will have those components, salt, sugar, fat, uh, which gets you to buy more and eat more, but also increases your risk for health conditions. I'm gonna tell you about someone else I work with, Anna. Now, Anna also had uh, gastrointestinal issues, and I'll tell you that is common uh, when folks are consuming a standard American diet, because what tends to happen um, beyond the, you know, the standard American diet doesn't tend to include a lot of fiber. And so what happens is it makes it hard for your body to process those foods um, and to have normal bowel movements. And so people tend to get uh, chronic uh, abdominal pain or chronic constipation, bloating, uh, these, you know, even irritable bowel because of some of the other um, parts that it can play with how you mentally uh, are aware of things. Uh, and so I tend to see a lot of folks, you know, present with, with chronic um, GI issues. But Anna also had high blood pressure. She and her typical meal, busy mom. So she ate fast food breakfast every day of the work week, would eat a fast food lunch uh, every day of the work week. And that would typically, she, you know, would try to eat more healthfully at lunch, getting a salad, but it was a fast food salad. And so it would have chicken, bacon, uh, some creamy type of dressing. Uh, and then she would buy these um, things, these frosty coffees, which apparently is coffee with ice cream. I'll say I had never even heard of this until I met this particular uh, client. Um, and so, you know, that enlightened me. So that was even out there. But yeah, but Anna would have this five days a week. And then for dinner, she would try to prepare something at home, which would be some type of meat and two sides type of a meal. When we worked together, we reversed you know, pretty much all of that uh, to a point of having her eat uh, more of a plant predominant uh, diet. And she resolved those uh, GI issues that she was having. Her blood pressure had become normalized and she ended up not having to need medications. Uh, now what her uh, food typically looks like is much less fast food. She uh, is able to prepare more of this stuff at home and eating like a whole grain English muffin. She'll put some type of spread on it, um, having a salad uh, with a more healthful protein. So that can look like tofu or beans, uh, tempeh uh, with some balsamic vinegar instead of that, uh, that creamy, you know, dairy, fatty dressing uh, and fruit. And she still had to have her, her frosty coffee ice cream drink, but she was able to cut that down to once a week instead of daily. And so just even, you know, think about the tremendous benefits um, of that.
And so this is something that I commonly ask to folks, uh, because for a lot of people, when we start talking about plants, and you know, this is even one of the discussions that I'm going to share uh, at the upcoming conference, uh, is how you know doctors can start to have this discussion with their patients. Uh, and that question is, you know, can you eat just a few more plants in turn to get these benefits to where you're needing less medications? And for most people, when they you know think of it that way, the answer tends to be yes. Uh, and what we know about plant predominant eating is that we can prevent and reverse the health crisis trifecta. So reducing our intake of meat and dairy and those processed foods that we looked at uh, in turn will in, reduce our intake of the sugar, salt, and the fat that we're consuming. Even just think back to Anna, you know, with her uh, going from five frosty coffees to one frosty coffee, how much less sugar and fat that she's consuming um, in her diet every day. And in turn, improving her her blood sugar and her GI issues and those other conditions. Uh, plants are high in fiber, and so they can naturally lower our blood sugar uh, because what happens when we have more fiber that goes through our gut is more slowly released. So even though those things tend to be carbohydrates, they don't work the same as if you had a, a soda, for instance, um, with that quick sugar that goes through your bloodstream uh, and spikes your sugar up really high. When you have a more high fiber food, like an apple, for instance, it's going to be slower release. And so you're not going to get that quick spike. Your body's not going to take a ton of insulin to uh, neutralize that, to bring it back to that normal level. And so in turn, uh, you will tend to lose weight. It'll improve the way that your bowels move. Uh, and then you'll stay fuller for longer because that food's not quickly just going through your body. It's taken uh, longer for it to, you know, be broken down in a slow but natural process by having uh, more plant foods. And then that also uh, helps you to consume overall uh, less calories, which can tend to help with weight loss without spending all those hours in the gym that people are concerned about. Uh, and so, you know, going back to that quote, food is medicine. And so looking at these uh, pictures here, one from uh, the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine and one from the AHA, uh, the American Heart Association, but, you know, looking just at the amount of fiber that you can get from plants, you can get more than a sufficient amount. What we actually know about fiber is that most Americans actually don't get enough fiber in their diet, which also contributes to the health crisis trifecta. But putting plants on our plate, you will get more than a sufficient amount. And then looking at the photo from the American Heart Association about lowering blood pressure uh, with these foods that you know are higher in potassium, uh, when we consume these types of foods that actually relaxes our uh, blood vessels um, and in turn helps to lower blood pressure. And you can get these things naturally. Now, going back to tip two, so picking on that keto diet. Keto diet is not the solution. And the other key point here is that really no fat diet is. And the reason for that is because fat diets tend to not be sustainable. Being a uh, specialist in obesity medicine, I have fellowship training in that. Uh, one of the common questions that people have, well, which diet is the best, you know, from all of this research? Uh, and really, it's the diet that a person is going to stick to. It's going to be the one that, you know, helps them. But it's also going to be that one that's healthful, because when we eat, healthful foods, we actually feel better. And when we feel better, that in turn makes us want to uh, consume more of those healthful foods. And that's what makes it sustainable. And that's why eating um, in a plant-based fashion uh, will tend to be more sustainable approach than a diet like keto. Um, because when we overly restrict, like, you know, a lot of folks who eat a diet, like a keto diet, will eat a lot of meat, a lot of dairy, uh, a lot of cream, but they will tend to restrict the vegetables. You know, I've met some folks who do keto and they say, oh no, you know, I can't have any fruit. Uh, well, do you want to live forever without having a piece of fruit? That's typically not going to be sustainable. And you're not going to feel very good. You know, we know uh, that people uh, experience what's called the keto flu, where they actually feel like they have the flu because they've cut out so many carbs from their diet uh, or that that hangry. You know, we've seen these commercials um, where you're so hungry because you've restricted so much and you don't have to do these things when you're eating in a whole food plant based sort of way. Uh 
you know, keto, like we talked about in this picture, it tends to be high in fat, particularly high in saturated fat, which can increase your risk amongst the health crisis trifecta of high cholesterol, uh, heart disease. Um, it tends to, you know, it's low in carbs, which is what makes it keto. And in turn, you're lacking that fiber. If you think back to that picture that I just shared with all of those high fiber foods, yes, they contain carbohydrates, but carbohydrates are fuel. They actually uh, help your body. They're a necessary macronutrient. Uh, and then you can become deficient in nutrients when you start cutting out uh, those essential groups like carbohydrates, um, because, you know, we need these macronutrients within our body. And the other thing that a lot of people don't know about the keto diet is that it was actually designed to treat epilepsy. It wasn't meant to be a weight loss program. Uh, and what they found, you know, as a, a side effect of while they were using it to treat epilepsy is that people were losing weight. And so that's kind of, you know, how it's gained its popularity more into weight loss, but it, you know, it wasn't even really designed for that. Uh, if we think about another popular way that people, you know, tend to want to do is just restrict calories. Oh, if I, you know, follow this calorie tracker and I just eat just this many calories, uh, then for sure, you know, I'm going to lose weight and I'm going to do all these things, but you still may not reverse those conditions of the health crisis trifecta. What we know about calories is that calories in does not exactly equal calories out because I'll give you the comparison, um, looking at this nut or butter package, 100 calorie pack. Now you could, you know, if you were on a 1200 calorie diet, you could eat 12 nutter butters and nothing else. Uh, but think about how you might feel. I don't know the last time you had some junk food, but think about how you might feel eating 12 nutter butters versus eating 1200 calories of plants, having a, uh, you know, a baked potato with some broccoli, some, uh, uh, black beans, uh, you know, some fresh salsa, uh, uh, big, bowl of fruit that, you know, wouldn't even get you to 1200, but just even just think about that and the difference of how you would feel. So not all calories are created equal. Uh, the other part to that is food is actually fuel. So eating those 12 nut nutter butters, you probably will still be hungry because, you know, that's not much density in those calories versus eating 1200 calories worth of plants. Um, and so, what can tend to happen with these calorie restriction diets uh, when people only focus on the calories only and not the the actual content of those calories is that people can tend to be fatigued and sluggish and get that hangry mood again uh, and even have nutrient deficiencies. Uh, once again, if you ate 12 Nutter Butters every day, you're going to be missing a whole lot of other vital nutrients um, from your body there. And just going back to Anna, you know, making these changes because, uh, you know, I like to kind of put a face on it to help people bring this home, uh, is that making these changes that she made, she increased her fiber content, she decreased her fat, decreased her overall calories without being hungry, and decreased her sugar intake. Um, and so she was feeling much better and reversing these conditions just by changing what she ate um, in this instance. Now, Bringing this all to a point um, from a philosophy that I uh, work by and that I use for my own health and the way that I help uh, patients and clients uh, at Essence of Health is uh, prevention and reversal of the health crisis trifecta is doable with mind-body balance. And so I'll tell you more about what this is. Mind-body balance includes the components of mindset, nutrition, and movement. And when we have these into balance, you will in turn lower your blood pressure, lower your blood sugar, lower your cholesterol, and be able to maintain a healthy weight. And so this is what this looks like uh, with these circles. And what this really shows you is the interconnectedness, uh, you know, kind of going back to that, even you are what you eat uh, component. Um, when we eat healthfully, uh, it gives you energy. So when you're eating those carbs, those healthful carbs for fuel, then you've got energy, then you can go out and exercise and you will want to go out and move. You'll want to go for that walk or that hike or ride your bike. And then in turn of, uh, from getting that movement in your body, then you're going to gain more mental clarity. You're going to boost your mood because you're going to release those happy hormones in your brain from movement. 
And so you're going to feel much better. And so that's that interconnectedness of this. Um, when you, when your mindset or your mental health is not at the best, then it leads to those components of like emotional eating and grabbing those uh, highly processed types of things. And so then if there's not that balance there with mindset, there won't be that balance there of nutrition. And when we eat those types of foods, they make us feel more sluggish. And so then we aren't going to move. And so it throws this whole balance out of whack there. And so this is really that key uh, to eating healthfully. And when you're eating more healthfully, it's going to give you the mental clarity that you desire and having that mental clarity and that energy is going to make you want to move. And so you'll get this mind body balance. Going, and then I want to tell you this last story. And I share this story, especially with Chef, Chef AJ's uh, audience, because Jennifer uh, was actually vegetarian um, when I started working with her. Um, she was ovo lacto vegetarian, meaning she, you know, still consumed cheese, um, dairy products, eggs. And she had eaten this way for many, many years, um, over a decade, uh, but would, you know, still consume quite a bit of processed food, fast food multiple times a week. Um, she had significant um, things going on in her life that was stressing her. Uh, so, you know, with the way she was eating along with these life stress it was leading to weight gain, fatigue, um, problems with her mood, those challenges, because if you think back on that mind-body balance graph, it was just out of whack. Uh, and she had developed prediabetes. And so it was time, you know, she felt it was time for that change. Um, just switching her from uh, that you know, traditional vegetarian, ovo lacto vegetarian diet to a whole food plant based type of diet. She lost a significant amount of weight. Uh, she now was able to consume much more unprocessed foods uh, and was even able to prepare, you know, a lot of these foods at home and stop eating so much fast food, even with her busy work schedule. Because, you know, if you think about how long does it really take you to, you know, if you must open up a can of beans, uh, cook some rice, uh, bake a potato. It, it doesn't take very long. Prepare a salad, you know, put all your healthful toppings on top. It doesn't take long. So people, you know, will go through a fast food because they say, oh, well, I only got a few minutes because I'm rushing, but you can spend that time or less that you wait in that long line uh, and so have something more healthful for you. And she actually reversed her prediabetes to normal blood sugar. Uh, but even just from going from those times from eating a lot of cheese and dairy and milk um, to eating these more beans in turn, you know, she increased her fiber. So that slowed down her uh, digestion and uh, helped her gut um, to be more healthful and in balance um, so that she can uh, better better process those carbohydrates. And so that helped to reduce her condition of insulin resistance, that prediabetes. She decreased her fat intake, uh, decreased her calories without hunger and decreased her stress. Thinking back to that mind-body balance graph um, and that interconnectedness with what we eat and our mood and our mental health, um, you know, we're under a high amount of stress, we release more cortisol and that actually can raise our blood sugar, make us uh, hold on to unhealthy weight. And so by getting that back into balance, she was even able to uh, improve that too. Uh, and so, you know, going back to where I had those fireworks, you can reverse your health crisis trifecta uh, because, a, you know, a large amount of it is related to what we eat, what we put on our plate and consume. Thinking back on that, think about what you're consuming. Is it contributing to your health condition or is it nourishing your body healthfully to give you good health? Uh, staying away from those fat diets um, and those, you know, things that just aren't going to be sustainable nor healthful for you. And then putting that balance into perspective that mind-body balance um, so that you can gain these health benefits. Uh, and so that is, you know, all that I, I have within this talk. Um, I can, you know, be reached at drshayla.com forward slash EOH. And I'm going to give these resources to Chef AJ. I do have a free uh, Nourish and Flourish five-day challenge, and it incorporates some quick and easy plant-based recipes, um, some health tips. And so uh, it's a good five-day boost even just to get you, you know, started on that path to improving your health. 
That sounds great. This was a wonderful presentation. The five day challenge is, is that does it have a start and stop or can people do it at any time? People can do it at any time. Once you start it, yeah, you'll start receiving each day. They'll receive an email um, in a video. So they get a video where I share these uh, quick health tips and then they'll receive that recipe. Uh, there's a habit tracker because, you know, we know it takes, you know, several weeks to get into the habit. So it starts them with tracking that. Yeah. So it's a good, a good jump start. Yeah. I didn't realize you were also an obesity specialist. Is that one of the main yeah. reasons patients seek you out? It is. Yes. I, um, yep. I completed my obesity medicine fellowship in 2018. And so it is, you know, a lot of folks are looking to lose weight. They want to do so healthfully. You know, they've already, you know, tried these other things that are out there. They've tried the crash diets. They've tried all this other stuff. And so they want to do it um, in a more holistic way and more healthful. It seems to be a big problem for so many people. I mean, it's something I suffered from for over 50 years until I figured it out and people just, they, they spend so much time, energy and money for a solution when I feel like the whole food plant-based diet is kind of the solution for most people. Yeah, it is for most and, and exactly, you know, a sustainable way. Cause you know, think about all the variety of foods you get to eat and you know, how much better you feel eating that way. Um, and you know, a lot of the folks that I work with, they like it because, you know, then we aren't having to, uh, you know, calorie count, you aren't, you know, held to this, this strict restrictive kind of thing. Um, you know, because nobody, nobody, I always use the, the thing that nobody ever developed diabetes from too much kale, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Yet, yet people, people still feel fear so many of the natural whole foods, like even fruit, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Yep. And it is, we should be eating fruit. Fruit, you know, is great for us. It has, it's a good source of fiber, a uh, good source of those good carbohydrates that, that help us to feel energized. So yeah. You, know, you mentioned the keto diet wasn't originally intended for weight loss and yet, uh, and it does work for weight loss, but it doesn't seem to work for health, for disease reversal, the way right. the whole food plant-based diet does. Exactly. Yep. So it does, it does work for weight loss, but the thing about, and you know, what I like about the field of obesity medicine, a lot of people are uh, you know, almost afraid of the term, you know, obesity medicine specialist, uh, because what we do is we're not making everybody a size two, for instance, that's not the goal. The goal is health and, you know, getting people to a healthful weight uh, and what that looks like. And so, you know, keto, yes, you can get weight loss, but it's not going to be healthful because, you know, I, I've even seen people uh, who have, have tried keto in my practice uh, and they do, they have high cholesterol, they, you know, um, and have these high blood pressure, even because of the amount of fat and sodium uh, that tends to be in some of these meat and dairy items and high fat foods that they're consuming. Uh, so just because you're, you know, you're going keto and you may even see some pounds on the scale drop, that doesn't mean that you're getting healthier in turn. And it doesn't even mean that they're losing fat. My understanding is they just lose a lot of water weight and that it's not actual real fat loss. Initially, right. A lot of that they're losing is water weight. But even, even if it was healthy, which most doctors don't believe it is, how is it even sustainable just eating, you know, fat and protein? That's the you know? thing. It's not. And then, you know, the minute they go eat a, a blueberry, then all of a sudden it's, you know, <laughs> upset their whole kind of keto exactly. plan. God, I, mean, right. I, I remember used to volunteer at this place and the lady, you know, she had to count out 10 blueberries. I'm like, wow. Mm -hmm. Right. That's yeah. True. It wants to live like that. You know, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, the other day I probably ate a whole pound. I don't know how many, I just was, yeah. I, mean, I wish yeah. I, that's what I love the best is I don't, as long as I know what to eat, I don't have to worry about when or how much. And it just seems like it's such a sense of freedom. Exactly. And that's the key. And that's the, you know, the key that I, I find working with folks that they, they really enjoy that, that sense of freedom, because, you know, um, you you can, you can go out and eat your bowl of fruit in, in peace and not, you know, have to worry about, did you weigh it or did you calculate it? And did you, you know, do all of these things um, for that? I think that would drive the average person yeah. crazy. Yeah, after, it would. <laughs> and, and like you say, it's, I think for most people, it's probably not sustainable. And the biggest, I guess, mistake, if you will, that I see in people uh, struggling with weight loss is they do one thing to lose weight, but then they don't continue it to sustain their weight loss. It, 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 Right. Yeah. Right. So yeah. And so that's do. what happens. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people tend to, you know, they cycle uh, because, you know, you're right. If you, you know, you try the, the keto, for instance, and you, you know, you lost 50 pounds on keto, but then you start it back. You wanted a potato and, you know, you upset all of your keto and now you're back to where you began 
Um, and it just puts you on the cycle, which is then frustrating and even producing more of that stress and, you know, and that frustration from that side of things, which uh, can even uh, hinder us from uh, weight loss from that perspective too. I, I love hearing about all the people that lose weight eating pretty much only potatoes. So, you know, mm-hmm. don't fear potatoes. Right. How do you feel about some of the more uh, drastic things that people are doing in the name of weight loss, Ozempic, all, all the various weight loss surgeries? Yeah. So, and there is a place for those things. Um, you know, what we know about the weight loss surgeries, uh, typically it's our, and I'm using the term morbid obese just because it's you know a term that's in the literature uh, and it, it's not an attack on anybody but those folks you know BMI is 40 or above uh, it, these things can come into place as a helpful adjunctive approach but if we're still not making those dietary changes it won't stick and I'll give you the example I've worked with folks who have had a, a gastric sleeve um, you know in some of these procedures before and what they found is yeah you know they may have lost a hundred hundred pounds five, seven years ago, but now that weight is back because they didn't stick to any of those dietary measures. So while these things can be helpful in getting over that initial frustration, because you know it's it's frustrating when you're, you know, you may be average weight loss is one to two pounds a week. And for if you've got 125 pounds to lose, that's frustrating, you know, that that one to two pounds a week. Uh, And so that's where these adjunctive approaches, the medicines and the surgeries can come into place. But if you're still not making those dietary changes along with it, you're not moving your body and you're not getting those other components that that mental health aspect under control too, then you're going to find yourself right back in that place. And so, you know, you would have put your health at all of that risk for what? But the thing is, you and I both know so many people that did it without any interventions, yeah. just making the lifestyle changes, but committing to them. Because, you know, I, you know, I remember just hearing recently about Lisa Marie Presley, that she died from, basically, there was uh, some kind of adhesions or something from her gastric bypass surgery a long time ago. Mm-hmm. You know, it may be a rare complication, but it's still a complication. Yeah. And then right. you hear about all the things with Ozempic, you know, stomach mm-hmm. paralysis, for example. And so my yeah. question is, is, is it worth it? You know, when we have what I think is almost the magic bullet for weight loss, health and sustainable, you know, weight yeah. loss. Yeah, we do. We certainly have it. But, you know, it, a lot of it is is the, the individual and the motivation of that individual, uh, which can be tricky, you know, <laughs> getting people to, to, to feel motivated to make these things and to make these changes quickly. Uh, and so, you know, I found that giving this extra kind of boost, if you will, is helpful to to people to get over that frustration. I'll tell you, I um, even see people who uh, have certain eating disorders. Uh, one common one that we see is binge eating disorder um, in the obesity med field. Um, and I had one uh, patient describe it to me as, as kind of like mind chatter. Uh, and what she would always hear is, oh, I have to eat and almost this fixation, you know, on that next meal and what it's going to look like and what it's going to taste like. And and all day long to a point of where, you know, they can hardly even function and work because they're constantly, you know, thinking about that next meal and that food. Uh, and so incorporating um, some of the obesity medications slowed down that mind chatter. So then she's not always fixated on that. And then now she can, you know, think about, oh, I can have a, you know, a healthy kale salad and I can have that. And I'm not so much, you know, thinking about, oh, well, what, what's my next meal going to be? And I can actually focus in and dial in and receive these changes uh, without the the chatter. So I know that you practice and live in Tennessee. What's that mm-hmm. like in terms of healthfulness as far as eating? Are you part of the stroke belt? <laughs> We, yeah, you know, we're still in the South and we, in Chattanooga, we're actually on the uh, border, the Tennessee, Georgia border. Um, but, you know, Chattanooga, it's interesting. It's it's like its own little pocket of the South because Chattanooga is, is known for uh, its outdoorsiness. So a lot of people come to Chattanooga to hike and to climb and to uh, do sports and uh, on the river, you know, we have the Iron Man that comes here every year. And so you tend to have a, a bit more healthful population, right? In Chattanooga, we have several uh, plant-based communities. We have Chatta Vegan as one of our community uh, groups uh, of plant-based eaters. We have several plant-based uh, restaurants. Um, 
and so you know we we're a bit spoiled uh just kind of right here uh but yeah but you go you know just outside of the city limits and you do and you know have all of these these people who still you know have these health conditions uh that we uh chronically see here in the south so yeah do you think that most people are even aware that what they ate caused or at least contributed to some of their lifestyle diseases nope most people aren't yeah. yeah and I can truly say that just from the people you know that I talk to and I'd say you know well think about that you know that burger you ate and let's let's talk about what was in that burger you know that that salt and that fat and what those things actually are doing within your body and how your body is is you know processing that and what it's doing and how it's contributing to that health condition and you know you even see people they kind of get that deer in the headlights look and then because you kind of see that thinking back to, oh, well, what did I eat last night? And what, you know, and what that did too. Yeah. So most people really, they just don't understand even that small component. Yeah. We somehow the people need to be edu- like almost warning mm-hmm. labels on food because, yeah, they, you know, I mean, what do they think? It's just genetic. I mean, well, you know, and you talk about warning labels and, you know, um, there have been certain, I know New York is one of the States where they, you know, have to put like the, um, calories on how much it is but even with calories and that's why I put it in my presentation it's not so much of a a calorie thing because you know with the nutter butters yeah you can go eat 12 nutter butters for 1200 calories but we you know you and I know eating 12 nutter butters is definitely not going to be helpful (laughs) for you Um, and so people just they're just confused and they just don't, don't understand uh, what that looks like. They'll see, you know, something low calorie or even the diet soda, you know, phenomena and people, you know, order the diet soda, uh, but that's not going to be more helpful, you know, um, than you drinking water instead. So, yeah. So people just really just don't have an understanding. Right. And, and I'm guessing that that most people aren't eating a majority of their calories from fruits and vegetables, mostly food. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Cause you know, we, we're, we're a busy population. We're always on the go. You can, you know, step outside of your door, most doors and, you know, pass by several fast food restaurants. Um, and what people do is they say, well, you know, I don't want to go fix something. So I'm going to stop at the, you know, this place or that place. They'll even wait in line. You know, it's unbelievable. Some of these lines, if you're driving down the street and, you know, the I've seen lines at certain restaurants and they're out in the street for a fast food restaurant. And, you know, people are waiting 30 minutes. You could have gone home. And made a whole meal. <laughs> you just brought up one of the best points. And I hope people will hear this and, 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 and share this with people because it's one thing if it really was fast food, right. but I, Sometimes I'll be, I don't usually like to go out late at night, but when I come home from my, my, my acting class, it's, it's like, it's like 10 o'clock at night and I'll drive by an in and out burger and the line is so long. And I'm thinking, well, first of all, who's eating at 10 o'clock at night, but even so the, you make such a great point. If you have time to wait in a fast food line, you have time to, you know, microwave a bag of organic rice, which is easy mm-hmm. at every store yeah. for three minutes and some broccoli for four minutes. Yeah. It, I, I think it's food addiction. I think that yeah. that's at the heart it of a lot of this. It, it certainly is. Yep. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's why the, the restaurant players, they, they do that. They put that salt, fat, sugar in there. And that's what has you waiting in line for 30 minutes at 10 o'clock. Uh, because <laughs> you can feel like you're, you know, savory. You can just taste it, uh, you know, get, getting that, that cheeseburger and fries that you're going to get. Um, and it is, it's just, you know, feeding those, those brain sensors, those cravings that, that you remember having. Yeah. And as a busy doctor, and I think you're a mother too, right? I am. Yeah. So, Mom of so, three. <laughs> <laughs> and how are you able to feed yourself and your family healthfully? Cause I'm, I'm sure you're as busy or more busy than the average person. Right. Yep. I, I, I'm a gadget person. So I love my, I love my crock pot. I love my Instapot. Uh, I've brought, um, the the uh the ninja the foodie <laughs> so we can make uh plant-based ice cream which my kids love i found out about that on your show and, and they absolutely love it they're like we're gonna make ice cream uh but yeah so i'm a gadget person and that does help to cut down on the time that it takes to prepare food and then the other trick that i like to do is i buy frozen so frozen broccoli frozen spinach frozen lima beans you can you know get these things frozen and then just whip it out cook it you don't have to worry about it going bad um you know on you before you get to make it like some of the fresher stuff uh and then another thing i'll tend to do is buy like the big large tub of um pre-washed uh salad greens uh every week and so you've already got that and so it really 
really makes it easy to to just grab and go. Absolutely. Is um do your children eat healthfully or do they want to eat the junk food? They they eat healthfully and and it's a you know it's a mix because kids especially they go to you know public school and so they you know still have that exposure that I'm fighting with. Uh but for the most part and at home and a lot of times they'll not even know that they're eating healthfully. For example, I buy the uh bean based brands of noodles. Uh and so my youngest, he's six years old and he loves noodles and he, you know, wants noodles a lot of the time. Well, he's eating chickpea noodles. <laughs> You know? And so he doesn't know that it's that it's beans. He just knows he's eating noodles and he likes noodles. So <laughs> that's nice. That's, well, you seem to have a great uh, manner, I'm guessing, with your patients. You seem very like not um, like you're not going to scold them or yell at them because right. you understand how difficult the problem is. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I, I often leave people with, let's just, you know, at least let's just get started putting more plants on your plate. And I, I don't even so much tell them that, you know, I want you to go vegan or I want you to, you know, put these labels because for those can even have negative connotations for people. And so I just say, let's just put some plants on your plate. Let's, let's see what that looks like, you know? And, yeah, and you know, it's so work. interesting because I've been vegan for almost 50 years and I, like I, I teach at places where I don't even have to say that V word, you know, ever because some people it's well, offensive or, right. You know, but, but the thing is, is I would, I would hope, or I would think that people know, would need to know that re- whether they eat meat or not, that processed food isn't going to be good for their health. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That seems yeah. to be what the majority of the calories come from for people, whether they're vegan or not. And, you know, mm-hmm. and that's why I have such mixed emotions because as an ethical vegan, people are like, oh, isn't this great? This impossible, you know, all this right. meat and uh-huh. fake cheese. And I'm like, I became vegan in 1977. There was none of that. I think yeah. the only thing we had I, we didn't even have soy milk powder back then, believe it or not. So there were no plant milks. I think that at the Loma Linda uh, gift shop, I remember there was like this like meat in a can, like this, I think it was called Worthington. It was these little sausages, but they were really high in fat and salt. And it's like, it, I think that's just, um, people just eat too much processed food, whether they're vegan or not. And, they're, and, 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 yeah. and, and it wouldn't be so bad if they were eating enough fruits and vegetables, whole grains, legumes but they're not. And that's, right. that's always been my message as the author of Unprocessed, but that's a, I don't yeah, know. No, you're, you're absolutely right. And that's also, you know, I shared the one story of the lady who was actually vegetarian and she had been vegetarian for all these years, but she still was developing health problems. And a huge amount of her issue was those processed foods. Um, and so, you know, getting those off of her plate and getting more healthful stuff, teaching her that, you know, like we just said, you can pull out some frozen vegetables and get that quicker than you can, you know, get going to get the grilled cheese in the fast food line, you know. But they don't <laughs> get the dopamine better. hit, you know. They don't, right. They yeah. don't get the, you know, yeah. the sugar, fat, and salt, boy. Mm-hmm. What are your favorite things to eat and make? Yeah. So uh, tofu scramble is one of my favorites that I do. And I will get the uh, tofu um, and uh, season it. I love garlic. I, I put garlic on everything. So, but definitely oh, garlic. It's funny you mentioned garlic because as a, as a chef, you know, you know, pe- pe- people, I've heard this saying, well, you know, when, when, when a recipe has garlic, they say you measure garlic with your heart. Like this, I mean, in other words, there's no measurement. It's just as much exactly. as you put in. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And I'm definitely the person that buys, you know, the big tub from Costco of garlic powder and just, you know, like, yeah. just shake, or shake, even shake. the cloves. I love that now, like at all the places they got the peeled cloves. Those are my favorite because I'm lazy and I, I could freeze them if before the expiration date. I love, I, yeah. because you can still have convenience, you know, some of the chefy chefs like Chef Bravo will, you know, like, you know, I don't know what the word is like, not, not poo poo me, but like, I can't believe, you know, you call yourself a real chef, but I'm also a person that works. And if I can get an onion right. that's already chopped or garlic that's already peeled, I'm mm-hmm. more likely to make that healthy recipe because there's exactly. nothing I hate more than peeling onions. Let me tell you. Yeah, I just, oh. yeah, that, yeah, that for sure. Yeah. And, you know, I'll tell you one of the, um, when I first, first went plant-based, um, I came across uh, Happy Herbivore. And, and the reason I was drawn to those recipes was exactly like you said, because they uh, were so few steps like most of them were like four steps and it was like yep you can have the pre-chopped onions the the frozen uh uh, peppers mix it you know and you can do these things without you know spending all day in the kitchen uh so yeah so you can definitely have those convenience things um another thing I, I like to make is a good stir fry and I've become a fan of California balsamic and some of their flavors oh my God, I was just thinking about that because you're having a special yep 
Mm-hmm. I, I love that. And the thing is, is, yeah, they're a little bit expensive, but you don't need a lot of it because it yeah. gives so much flavor, maybe like two tablespoons and mm-hmm. you're done. And they're, they're having so flavorful. Well, oh let me tell you. So one of my favorite flavors, and I don't get anything for this, but I told him a long time ago, Thomas Allen, because I, and when I lived in the desert, I, I felt like I was cheating on him because I was going to this other vinegar store because <laughs> they had a flavor that tasted like Italian dressing without oil. And I said, mm-hmm. you got to make something like this because this is my husband's favorite. And he did. It's called Seven Herb Italian. It's his bestseller. I and have that one. <laughs> However, he is he is making in September a sun-dried tomato version that's oh. even better. It's going to blow your mind. So, yeah. Oh, I bet. Okay, so I have to look out for that one. But yes. yeah, but you that's- can do so many things with, with all of those different flavors yeah, too. That's great. So, I, so yeah. if people didn't see the last time you were on the show, I can link to that. But when did you first become plant-based? Did, where did When did you hear about it? Yeah, so it was after... Um, it was, you know, I started kind of a little bit into almost, I call it dip my toe into the plant-based realm uh, when myself, I had started having some gastrointestinal issues, which I commonly see amongst other individuals when I was in college. Uh, and this is, you know, been a couple of decades now. And so, and I found out that I was just severely lactose intolerant. And so I would have this, you know, pain doubled over. And so I started reading more and figuring out, uh, you know, dairy-free options and what that looked like and not having that in my diet. Um, but really, really, after I had my uh, oldest son, uh, when I was in residency, I really, you know, wanted to then become healthier, uh, to be able to, you know, do things with my kid and for myself. Um, so yeah, so it's been over uh, 10 years now uh, that I've been plant-based. Um and yeah, and just incorporating these things. And I always notice the difference even in myself and how I feel if I start, you know, sliding back to even some of those more plant-based plant-based processed foods versus the whole foods. You, you feel that difference. And, you know, yeah. I've found that in my own life uh, when I introduce it to patients. And so, yeah, let's make that difference. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if nutter butters are plant-based. I didn't look at those people. <laughs> Oh, Oreos you know. are though. Did you know that Oreos are vegan? Yeah, I have been told that. Yep. Yeah. Doesn't mean yeah. they're healthy. Do you have time in your day to exercise with all you have to do? I do. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually, um, I'm a triathlete. So I actually like doing oh, triathlons. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. And uh, running, I actually picked up running too. After I had my, my oldest son, it was just something, you know, that I wanted to do for myself and my health and I got bitten by the bug, by that runner's bug. And so, Good. yeah, I do. I practice, practice what you preach. Good. Right. Exactly. So if, uh, if people want to get in touch with you, do you have a social media presence? We know now you have this new podcast, which I'll definitely right. listen to. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, Essence of Health Wellness Clinic on Facebook and Instagram, uh, Dr. Shayla on TikTok. So nice. Okay, thank you. I'll make sure everything is in the is in the show notes. Yeah, yeah. Well, so nice to see you again. I look forward to meeting you next month at the Plantrition Conference and hearing you here. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, and thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow for another fabulous guest.